Hey everybody, Andrew Patterson from Ironman Hacks here. I'm with James Bell from Nutrition Triathlon. Give him a subscribe and uh, because James is going to tell, tell us a whole lot today about what type of carbs to fuel with while racing. Oh, hey, Andrew. Thanks for having me on. If you're watching this on my channel, then do go over to see Iron Man Hacks on YouTube. Andrew's got loads of different videos and interviews with other guest speakers. So go give him a subscribe and have a look at his videos. Thanks, James. Well, as a trained, you know, nutrition expert and triathlete yourself, yourself, I'm sure you've thought about the different types of carbs for fueling while racing. Um, and I mean, what is a carb? Is, is it is it just a sugar? Yeah, uh, essentially. I mean, carbohydrate means um, carbon with water. And the basic form of uh, a carbohydrate is a simple sugar. Um, so it's glucose is the main one which we hear lots about. Um, and the other one is fructose. And th there's, there's a few others, but as triathletes and, and people who uh, are sporty, that's that's what we care about. It's glucose and fructose. These are our, our main forms. And that's what our body runs off, essentially. It's the kind of basic energy um, that our, lots of our cells use to help fuel them. And um, is, is sucrose part of each of those? So sucrose is a, a combination, actually. Sucrose is a combination of glucose and fructose. Um, and when you when they're combined, which is essentially table uh, sugar, table sugar, um, that that's sucrose, which is glucose and fructose combined. Right. So what's the difference between glucose and fructose in terms of where we find them and what they're used for and why why we should care? So you, you find them in different amounts in very in different foods. So things like pasta, bread that type of thing, that's glucose or it, it's starch in vegetables, which we break down to glucose and store it as glycogen. Um, fructose you'll find in other foods. You, you'll often find combinations. Fructose might be more um, prominent in different fruits, for example. Um, now, when it comes to what our body does with it, they have different processes. They, they kind of fuel different parts of the body. Um, both of them can help to in improve our glycogen stores, which is what we, we kind of care about as triathletes because we, we want to store carbohydrates in our body. Um, fructose has more of a role in re replenishing liver glycogen. If you've ever heard of the store of uh, glycogen in our liver, fructose can contribute to that more than glucose does, um, which is why you want to have this kind of balanced diet because you're coming at it from both angles. But the reason we kind of want to know about it a little bit as triathletes and focus on it is because when it comes to racing supplements there's different ones which will contain different amounts of glucose and fructose and this will be one of those things which actually a lot of people won't have even thought of or looked at um, but the more data and science we get the more we can see that actually the different combinations of these two glucose and fructose that we have might actually have quite a big influence on how we can race. So I, I think it's one of those things which is is good for triathletes to know and helps them to fine tune their own nutrition plans. What what would you say we should look for? And what would you say, you know, how, how would someone make go about making that decision and, and doing that fine tuning? So if we as a, a kind of starting point, if we say that in general for racing or hard exercise if we're going over about 90 minutes um we want somewhere between 40 to 80 grams of carbohydrates per hour and that's that's a kind of starting point and why we want to know that now if you look at sport nutrition supplements and for example um carbohydrate supplements when we race so there's science in sport there's talk there's noon there's lots of different ones who provide carb supplements if you look on the ingredients list, some of them will just say glucose. Some of them will say glucose and fructose. Now, it becomes more important when we look at how much of these we can absorb. In terms of glucose only, we can absorb somewhere about uh, around 60 grams per hour. So for some people might not be able to absorb that much. Some people can absorb more. 
But if you think 50 to 60 grams of glucose per hour, but people are using a carbohydrate supplement that actually pushes them into like the 80 or 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour, they're probably not going to be able to absorb that, which means that they're going to be more likely to end up with things like tummy upset, so diarrhea, cramps, that kind of thing. So it's actually about trying to fine tune that. Now, fructose, which I mentioned is the, the other sugar, when it's absorbed by the tummy, it it's absorbed by a different, what we call transporter. So think of it like a, there's, there's two different gateways. One will let you absorb glucose and one will let you absorb fructose. You maximize the glucose one, which means you've still got the fructose one open. And by absorbing both of them at the same time, it means you get more carbohydrates into your system, which means you've got more available to, for, for fueling your race. And that's where it kind of becomes more important. And you'll see a lot of brands now are starting to combine them. Um, and, and that's one of the things though, Martin push it and science and sport have just come out with their new, new beta fuel gel, um, which again, does this glucose and fructose combination. Um, you might actually see it as maltodextrin, which is essentially another form of, of glucose. And they're, they're doing both of them together to try and increase the amount you can absorb and essentially improve how well you can fuel yourself and race. So let me get this straight. You can have glucose or fructose as a fuel, as a type of carb, as a type of sugar. And each one has its, it's like a, like a, like a pipe or a hose. And if you can activate both at once, you can get even more fuel at the same time, as opposed to relying on one. Yeah, because there's a there's a maximum amount. It you know it's at hundred percent capacity. So if you try and go over that, all you're doing is just having stuff sitting right. in your gut. It's not being absorbed. Right. But then that's sort of assuming that having more or that absorbing more is a good thing. Is is yeah. absorbing more a good thing? Yes, in 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 kind of in short, um, especially if you're trying to race kind of as well as possible, more is good because um, I know we, we we've talked about this before, but in uh, terms of carbohydrate stores in our body's carbohydrate stores, which is glycogen, you've only got an, a certain amount. If you run out of that, you bonk. So right. the idea is to take in fuel in the form of carbohydrate supplements, and then you use that. So you're using that because you've added it into your body. It goes into your bloodstream and your muscle cells use that rather than using their own stores, which means you're, you're using that outside source to fuel your muscles and you don't bonk. That, that's the kind of premise of it. Right. So there's sort of a parallel. It's sort of like a comparison between, you know, the two, two sources of fuel could be um, glucose and fructose, but then another two, two um, channels of fuel could be, could be glycogen and fat, right? Like we talked about earlier about the LCHF debate, um, meaning those are two, those are two channels or methods of metabolizing fuel. Um, but you're talking about how to activate both these sugar types, or both these carb types simultaneously, as opposed to relying on one, or as opposed to taking in too much of one that you can't take on and then having it sit in your stomach. And then we all know what happens. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, okay, so is the reason that we should be taking in as much as we can simply because we can burn or we, we, we require more calories than we can, you know, we're, we're exerting more caloric expenditure than we can take on generally? Is that the reason? Yeah, yeah. So we, we will always use far more calories when we race than we can consume. Um, so even if you get to the, the kind of general, generally considered max of 80 or 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour, you have four calories per gram of carbohydrates. So that puts you at, uh, 320, unless my maths is wrong, um, 320 calories per hour. And you're, you're going to be using far more than that yeah. when you race. Yeah. So, so you, you can never play, you, you can never equal it. You can um, never catch, so you, catch up to that. No, right. so it's about trying to prolong it. So as many of these channels, as many of these alternate fuel sources that we can activate at once is best, right? Glucose is one, fructose is another. Yeah, uh, definitely those two. I mean, so and this is one of those things which is worth saying, it, although we're talking about carbs. Um, 
when you take in fat as a fuel source during a race, it does nothing. So when, when, for example, we're doing a, a race where we're trying to go as fast as you can, you'll see some supplements out there which are looking to kind of target fats or, or people will have like really, uh, they'll have cheese sandwiches or something like that. The fat that you take in there does nothing except increase the likelihood that you get tummy upset. It doesn't contribute to your performance in the slightest. So this is why when I saw gels, I saw this brand of gel. It's not even gel. It's just peanut butter. I, yeah. it, it, it sounds good. I love peanut butter. But then I thought, hold on, that's pretty fatty. Is that really a good idea? No, no. In truth, and I love peanut butter. And if, if I could race on it, I would. I mean, it'd probably be pretty claggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and so I know we mentioned this before as well, but you've got about sixty to 70,000 calories worth of fat stored in our cells uh, of energy work. So you don't need any more. Um, and the process to absorb fat is a lot harder than carbohydrates. Carbohydrates will just get absorbed. Fat has to be broken down. You've got to add, uh, bring in other parts of your digestive system and absorb it in a different way. And it's a lo much longer process. Um, so yeah, it's, we, we don't want that when we race. But, but now you're talking about the body fat, which can can be absorbed if you're if you're like an LCHF like low carb high fat kind of guy, right? Uh, how, how do you mean that? Sorry, I'm saying you you were, first we were talking you were talking about cheese and peanut butter. Like you don't eat that during an Ironman. You don't eat a block of cheese during an Ironman as fuel. You're saying the fat in there is not absorbable. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean it, it might be absorbable. You know, over hours and hours but it's right. not going to contribute to energy that your cells are using during the race but isn't your body fat like endogenous onboard fat absorbable if you're fat adapted it, we use it definitely um and, and that's what i mean in that we've got so much stores there already that we don't need to to bring in extra um but that's what we we're oh. talking about before where um you can, you certainly can use fat, but the harder you work and the harder you're, faster you're trying to race, the less fat you'll use, which is why the focus for racing should be on carbohydrates rather than anything else. No matter what, unequivocally. All right, so we got a video up here. We can link to it right up there, somewhere up there about the LCHF debate and why or why not it should be right or not right for you. Okay, so what products out there you mentioned you mentioned a few of them that have a good combination of glucose and fructose how can we tell like how will we know like if i'm looking at a label how am i going to know if this one is one that you know activates those dual you know food yeah. uh, you know fuel channels for me yeah it's a good question so firstly one to look for is the the marketing um around it so that it, it's becoming much bigger now so martin do it um, and they, they will write on it about the combination. Um, and the same with um, science and sport with the beta fuel gel. Um, it will say on it fructose and maltodextrin, and they will often put up a ratio. Um, and the kind of gold standard ratio at the moment is 0 0.8 fructose and one of uh, maltodextrin or glucose. And that's that ratio that you're talking about. Um, and if you look in the ingredients list, they will say it will, it should very clearly say fructose and then it will either say glucose or maltodextrin. And that's how you, you, you know, because it will be in the ingredients list. Um, and so it, it's one of those things you can have a look at your, your gels or whatever at home and you'll see it very clearly uh, and different ones will just say they contain it or not. So it's almost a 50, 50 <laughs> split, but not quite. Yeah. So it used to be more like a, um, 33% 66. So like a, a third and two thirds. Um, and this is actually what science and sport have just come out with, with their beta fuel gel. Um, so Martin used the 0 0.8 to one. And that was based on a study in 2013, I think it was, where they looked at the amount, they, they, they tried different ratios and looked at how much you could absorb and then, and then use. And they came out with this 0 0.8 to one. Um, and historically, science and sport haven't done that ratio they've now swapped to using it. And that's what you'll see on the front of the science and sport ones. Now, are you aware of any foods that have this similar ratio that I can just buy? 
Uh, no, if I'm totally honest off the top of my head, uh, no. I mean, because, and part of it is that I would say in terms of racing, you generally want the ones which are simpler and easier. Generally, the food stuff you have will have added kind of extras or be slightly harder to digest because in order to, to kind of make it more race friendly and simple, the better, it has to be designed specifically for that. Um, and yeah. certainly when it comes comes to other food and we're just talking about a normal diet and helping to refuel, we don't want these simple sugars. Um, in our normal diet, we want healthy whole grain carbohydrates and, and lots of fresh fruits and veggies, you know, more whole foods. Right. Of course. Okay. So excellent, James. Thank you for this. I learned so much here about, um, you know, choosing a carb supplement, uh, understanding that ratio for racing and really the difference between glucose and fructose and, and, you know, how to maximize your carb absorption per hour. So thank you very much for that. Um, everybody, I hope you subscribe to nutrition triathlon. Thanks very much. And we'll see you on the next one.